John Barrett from North Ogden. Um, a continuation on of your uh, what you were talking about earlier in uh, Article One, Section Eight. It is the Congress's responsibility to pass laws, and uh, we s continually see these executive orders that the president makes, and also the czars are passing regulations all the time. <coughs> I was wondering what your thoughts are on the constitutionality of that, and also what we can do to maybe have the House and the Senate approve those executive orders. Excellent question, John Barrett. I'm very happy that you asked that question. I actually see this as one of the biggest problems that we have in our government today, and, and this one too, as you mentioned, um, is, uh, is constitutional in, in its origin and in its solution. I referred a few minutes ago to the fact that we've had a big problem with um, people in our government ignoring this vertical separation of powers between state and local governments. We also have the problem of ignoring the division of powers uh, along the horizontal axis. Here we're talking about the, the division of power between the legislative branch and the executive branch. Now the Constitution makes very clear in, in two places that the power to make laws belongs to Congress. Article 1, Section 7 says that all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress which shall consist of a Senate and a House of Representatives. Article 1, Section 7 prescribes the formula by which law must be made in the federal government. It has to pass through the House of Representatives and it has to pass the Senate. And then after it's passed both houses, it has to be submitted to the President. And it becomes law unless he vetoes it. If he does veto it, Congress can override him, but only by a two-thirds supermajority vote. That's the only manner by which you're supposed to be able to make law. Uh, again, it's the legislative power granted in Article I to Congress, exclusively to Congress, because it says all legislative powers herein granted, not just some of them. The power, the, the legislative power is the power to legislate. The power to legislate is the power to make law. A law is a rule that carries the, the binding force of government and, and, and applies it to the public at large. In other words, a, a law is something that binds the, the, the public generally, and, and uh, it's something that our courts will enforce. It's something that people will recognize is, is a normative standard imposed by that government. Well, that's exactly what we're getting out of a lot of our executive branch agencies. We have volumes and volumes of laws, effectively laws, that are being passed by executive branch agencies every single day. Uh, uh, in fact, just, just to give you an example of the volume that we're talking about, last year, Congress passed about 3,000 pages worth of new law. Uh, what is that about like that, I suppose, a stack about that high. Some would say that was 3,000 pages too many. Uh, uh, regardless, you compare that to the amount, the, the volume of new regulatory text, proposed regulations and proposed re re uh, revisions to existing regulations, 82,000 pages just from 2011. This in addition to our existing body of federal regulatory law codified in the Code of Federal Regulations of about 160,000 pages. This is uh, really kind of dangerous. It's easy to understand how it started. It st started with some relatively innocuous objectives. Um, Congress started a few decades ago passing laws with some fairly broad, unobjectionable sounding goals in mind. They passed one, for instance, called the Clean Air Act. Um, uh, and, and this is a slight oversimplification, but to prove the point, in, in effect, Congress passed a law that said, we shall have clean air. Now, who's against clean air? I mean, I'm certainly not going to vote for the Dirty Air Act. Um, and, and few people wanted to vote against the Clean Air Act, because if you're against clean air, you must be in favor of dirty air. And then it said, in effect, we give power to the EPA to decide what clean air is, what air pollutants are, and then we'll give them power also to enforce the law. So this creates a couple of problems. From that moment forward, when the EPA makes new regulations, it promulgates them, it is, in effect, making law because it's creating new, generally applicable rules carrying the force of law. But it's not going through Congress. So if they come out with bad regulations, bad laws, 
you can't go to your member of Congress and say, you passed this bad law, because your member of Congress might say, I didn't vote for that. I just voted for clean air. If you don't like the EPA law, go talk to EPA. But when you talk to EPA, they say, oh, John, we don't want to talk to you. We don't work for you. We're not elected. Uh, we don't stand for re-election next year or ever. We were never elected. We never will be. We don't report to anyone who is. And uh, so this is a big problem. It's also a problem because we're combining what the Founding Fathers said you should not combine, which is the power to make laws and the power to enforce those same laws. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a bad idea. There is, fortunately, light at the end of the tunnel because there is a relatively easy fix, starting with the provision that I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of in the Senate. It's called the RAINS Act, R-E-I-N-S. Think of reining in your horse. The RAINS Act says, in effect, anytime there's a new, um, a new law, a new regulation that qualifies as a major rule under the Office of Management and Budget Standards, meaning if it has a, a big economic impact, it won't take the force of law until after it's been passed by both houses of Congress and submitted to the president and signed into law by the president. It's a very simple approach. It allows us to maintain the, um, the, the area-specific expertise of our federal agencies, but it puts an important check on them, making members of Congress accountable if they adopt these uh, regulations. And so I, I think that would do more to solve that problem than anything else we could do. So talk to your senators and representatives, make sure they support it. You can check me off the list though because I do support it and I'm a co-sponsor.